Because our world and our universe are so vast, you can imagine that the study of creation encompasses a wide range of topics. Thus, there are many branches of the natural sciences. This course is titled Physical Science, so it would be good for us to start with what that exactly is. The physical sciences focus on a study of non-living things. That means in this course, we will mainly focus on two branches of science, chemistry and physics. Chemistry deals with the study of matter, what things are made of, so it will look at the structure, composition, behavior, and interactions of materials. Physics focuses on studying matter and energy and how both of these relate from forces and movement. Next, we'll end this course with a brief study of the earth sciences and how the physical sciences connect with living things. These physical science topics will give you a solid foundation for science study in the future. And the scientific process you will learn in this module will help you to think, ask questions, and discover more about God's created world. Now, you will also learn that science is made up of knowledge that scientists have compiled, and yet it's growing and changing as science advances. That means that although the information you will learn in this course, or any science course for that matter, it's the most up-to-date information available, know that it can change as new advances and discoveries in science are made. It turns out that the natural sciences can be divided into three major categories, the life sciences, physical sciences, and earth sciences. These three branches can be further divided into more specialized areas too. However, these divisions are not so neatly separated in the real world. That's because there's lots of overlap. The life sciences, for example, involve the study of living things, but that can include botany, zoology, ecology, oceanography, chemistry, even physics. Think of what's needed to study a deep ocean stubby squid. Yes, that's a real organism. This little squid is a living creature, so that involves zoology. It lives in the deep ocean where no sunlight can penetrate, and it's very cold. Scientists study how it can live down there, as well as what it eats. That involves an understanding of ecology and physics. Why physics? Well, in the deep ocean, there's extreme pressure pushing from all that water above. How do living organisms survive that pressure? What about the saltiness and other minerals in the water? Do they affect our little squid? That requires a knowledge of chemistry. So you can see that there's a need to study a range of sciences in order to better understand things in our world. I'm in Lisbon, Portugal, a huge port city in Europe. The castle behind me is called Belém Castle, and it served as the launching point for Portuguese sailors for centuries. As sailors would navigate the oceans, they would incorporate more than just one kind of science. So in their travels, they would study oceanography, meteorology, astronomy, zoology, botany, lots and lots of sciences from multiple branches. So when you study the world, you utilize more than one kind of science.